go what is going on from the bleachers sports show talking all things nwa my thoughts my recap on nwa power this was uh episode uh 19 uh strictly chaos uh was the uh title and um it, i don't know <laughs> uh it was definitely uh chaos definitely um uh, a lot of things are are being tied up together as we go along week in uh week after week right the the first thing that uh I, I kind of, I want to just kind of, not going to go over every little single thing, just kind of trying to bring uh, these certain things um, together. Um, you had, for example, to me, I was indifferent uh, about the Pope coming to NWA. I kind of questioned, like, what exactly is... You know, the, 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 uh, what exactly is the purpose of the Pope? You know, in a sense of, okay, a majority of these people, uh, these uh, that get in the ring there, these athletes, these wrestlers, not even wrestlers, like, uh, you know, valets as well, they honestly, they could all talk. They could all work the mic. What exactly would be the purpose of a pope? I mean, yeah, you know, everyone knows how to cut their own promo. But as the weeks have um, escalated, you kind of, I now have a sense of, uh, of of why I should care about the pope, especially after this week's episode. Pope conniving a weasel. Um, you know, all about the money, trying to buy everything. A dirty, sneaky SOB, buying everything that he can. And as soon as you can't perform or you, you don't make him happy, just like that, he's going to drop you. And he's going to drop you because, well, he's the Pope, he's money, and he could. He will even make friends turn on each other. The bouncers, well, they turned on Eddie Kingston. Who's seen that coming? Eddie Kingston and the bouncers, they seem like boys from 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 the streets from back in the day. And over here comes a guy like Pope who pays them a little something and just like that they're no longer Eddie Kingston's friend to think these guys from the streets in storyline wise the streets where it's about loyalty and not snitching sticking up for your brother here comes the money more uh, the money guy, Pope, and he turns that all around. He's been getting the one up on Eddie Kingston. If you remember, he you know uh, he was he was trying to recruit Eddie Kingston, and then he dropped him because he didn't want to drop homicide. Where is this going? What is this leading towards? I think it's the inevitable. I think Homicide will turn on Eddie Kingston. Or vice versa, who knows? Someone's turning on someone. My oh my though, how this storyline has picked up. And um... 
it's picked up steam and is moving well along nicely. Let me tell you something. The NWA, they know how to tell a story. They, it's, they're able to build characters and tell a story. Something that now you may argue, well, just finally AEW has kind of started to do that. Kind of, they're working, uh, they're in what they should have been doing in the beginning. Now they're um, trying to kind of fix that mistake and go backwards, so to speak. Uh, nonetheless, though, and, and another solid promo by Kingston... You're probably snitching and calling the snitching calling in the back. Another excellent promo by Kingston and the Pope not to be uh, outdone by Kingston comes back with a solid promo as well. Great segment between those two. What I also... Um, uh, here's one thing I did not like. Um, and I, I mean, maybe I'm nitpicking here. The three-way dance between um, Matt Cross, Ricky Starks, and uh, Ziggy Dice. Okay. Um, I, I, and this was a non-title match. Kind of, and when you when you when you heard non-title match, you think to yourself, okay, uh, you know that um, Ricky Starks is going to lose. You know that he's going to lose. Here's my 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 kind of uh, my my thing here. What I what I don't understand. So he, uh, the way they explained it. Uh, prior is that you have to be considered to get a, a title shot at the heavyweight champion uh, Lucky Seven, I believe it is. Seven victories, seven successful title uh, defenses. But it kind of gets diminished, right? If you lose a match. If you lose the match, right? Uh, even though it's not for the title... And even though it's a three-way dance, you you still lost the match. You didn't win. So you could essentially be in a non-title match five straight weeks, have five straight losses, and then pick up where you left off with your title defenses. And if you only need three more victories, well, to get to seven... Successful title fences, well, there you are. But in actuality, you were, you know, three wins and five losses, let's say, the last eight weeks. So it kind of diminishes that, right? And what exactly is the, uh, uh, the logic in not uh, defending the title? Uh, because these guys were all... In the tournament. So. And if it's not these guys. If they're not worthy. In. um, Receiving title shots. Then who is worthy. If it's not these two. In uh, Matt Cross. And. um, In Ziggy Dice. Then who else would it? Then who else would it be? I think these two guys are your top number one, two contenders for the uh, for that TV title. Right, or, or unless I'm uh, mistaken. So I really didn't understand that. It kind of uh, you know diminishes to me. Um, the, uh, the seven straight wins and challenging the, uh, the title. Um, Danny Deals 
Manny Dios, Timmy Storm, and um, Jack Stain there, former NWA champion. Um, listen, I like what they're doing uh, with Storm now, the kind of, um, you know, Breaking him away, they still, I think that's still a money feud with all this and Tim Storm. Those two always have great matches. Kind of separating them now, being that all this is doing his own thing. And this is a good thing for him to do against, um, you know, the former uh, champ. Uh, I, I think this is a good thing. Danny Deals is annoying and. Um, uh, just really like weaselly. Um, uh, kind of reminds me, like, in a sense, of uh, of a let's say Harvey Whippleman type guy. Also, could cut a promo good on the mic, didn't stutter. Um, you know, uh, and this is a good thing for Tim Storm to be involved in. Uh, it's good that the um, the newer watchers of the NWA is introduced to the former NWA champ. Kind of, you know, um, oh, just oh, opens up the, um, you know, that, you know, Mr. Tim Storm is not always as genuine as he seems. Maybe there's a little shadiness to Tim Storm. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how they will tell that story, being that, you know, they're saying that, listen, Tim Storm and, um, Jax there have a little bit of history, and Jax feels betrayed, and here's why, so, be very interested to, uh, to see how that story, uh, develops. Nick Albus looked like a million bucks with his suit. His tie, his jacket, calls out Marty Scroll. And Marty Scroll, with his tight skinny jeans and a shirt uh, lo- that looks like you could get at, at Kmart or Walmart, uh, it just, you know, for a guy that's supposed to be, you know, uh, like the guy, uh, the man. The, the, the prestige of ROH of Ring of Honor, uh, Ring of Honor for Marty Scroll. I don't know. He just kind of looked. He didn't look the part uh, to me. He kind of looked like a chump next to uh, all this. You know. Uh, so I mean, I, you know. But it was a nice. Again, it's good to see different characters being introduced from ROH into NWA. You know, 2020 and beyond is uh, about um, companies uh, co- uh, working with each other. You know, you scratch my back a little bit, I scratch your back. I think it's needed for these smaller companies to survive. And I think that's what you're going to see as we keep on going uh, down the uh, you know, down the road here. Um, You know, Molina, Thunder Rosa, didn't, you know, uh, I kind of guess, uh, I kind of, I see what they're trying to do here with Molina and Thunder Rosa. You know, Molina, uh, here's, you know, why it doesn't make sense to me, okay, and I Molina got a title match because she basically says I'm having a title match just after one what one victory on TV and she's puts herself in a title match who sanctioned this match Molina who made this match Molina made this match <laughs> and this is again why I'm going to say that you need a NWA commissioner kind of keep order with certain things. Um, 
I think you're gonna see in further weeks, you know, maybe Molina does not have a uh, kind of mind control as she thought she did on Don La Rosa. Maybe she needs to rethink her strategy here. And that's what I think she's doing. Rethinking her strategy, trying to maybe have some more mind control of her, and you will see her manipulation in coming weeks. But, you know, how are they going to explain why she didn't wrestle? And why should she deserve another title shot? That will be interesting to see. Very interesting in how they, how Camille... Uh, plays in all this, who all of a sudden just comes out of nowhere and does a spear. So now Camille asserts herself, or does she, because it's in uh, the women's division. Uh, a, a lot of, you know, a, a lot is progressing with NWA. It's moving forward, you know, and week after week, just, um, you know, storylines keep evolving, they have this thing planned out, they're able to tell a story, um, and, you know, they might not have the, you know, the most money, but, you know, when they come out there, each week, it's not that one hour, it's not where you're looking at, you know, your watch trying to see when it's over. It's entertaining. Uh, it's very entertaining. Uh, so, it's definitely worth a watch if you haven't uh, watched it yet at all. So, those were just some of my thoughts from NWA Power. I look forward to next week's episode upcoming. I hope all is well, guys, and look forward to speaking to you very, very soon.